Is being a pharmacovigilance or drug safety pharmacist something you're considering? And have you wondered how much money you could be making in this field? Well, most pharmacists believe that you can be paid really well and they're right. But getting into the field is a totally different matter. One that's actually challenging because of how extensive requirements are to get into this. So in this video, we will be exploring pharmacovigilance and drug safety and answering the question, is it the right career for you? By the way, I'm Alex. Hi, I'm the founder here. And we talk all things about pharmacy careers and we help pharmacists get jobs that they absolutely love in six months or less. So let's get into it. So what is PV or pharmacovigilance and drug safety? PV was significantly influenced by a really horrible tragedy. Uh, in the 1950s and 60s, a drug was released called thalidomide that was used for anti-nausea for pregnant women. And sadly, it caused severe birth defects. Like with many healthcare systems, until a tragedy happens, there's no regulation. And this forced many bodies around the world to create systems in place to protect dangerous chemicals from hurting lives. Drug safety is like an overall encompassing term that looks at everything from the development to the processing to the delivery and maintenance and distribution of drugs. Meanwhile, pharmacovigilance is much more about the management and monitoring of side effects from drugs that are already distributed into the marketplace. I like to think of PV fitting within drug safety. Unfortunately, though, what creates confusion is drug safety and PV sometimes get used interchangeably, but they definitely mean different things and have different positions. For this video, I'm going to be excluding drug safety within health systems as it's a totally different industry. They focus on different things and different problems, but you can get a drug safety position within hospital systems that usually fits within, you know, quality metrics. A PV pharmacist role often includes things like assessing and analyzing side effect reports, looking at big picture data and help implementing policies, procedures in order to help the distribution of safe medications. These pharmacists work within pharmaceutical companies, regulatory bodies, sometimes associations, CROs or clinical research organizations, and sometimes within healthcare facilities. We don't know how many pharmacists work in this field, but we do know that there's well over 2,500 pharmaceutical companies across the United States and the world. There's even more and they employ sometimes a whole department of people who specialize within pharmacovigilance. There's also other professions that work within this field from doctors, nurses, even veterinarians. Typical titles in this field include pharmacovigilance pharmacist or pharmacovigilance specialist, drug safety associate, and I think it's best to just look up the words pharmacovigilance and drug safety when searching for these jobs online, as that'll help you ex uh, explore other opportunities, uh, especially for ones that are open to pharmacists, but are looking at other candidates as well. well. Let's talk about salary. Now, if you look on Glassdoor, what do specialists make in this field in pharmacovigilance? It ranges wildly from 97 to 181. And the reason for that is because if you just typed in pharmacovigilance pharmacist, you're not going to see a salary range there. So we're looking at a range here that includes multiple professions, nurses, doctors, all sorts of different things. And there's really not an average, unfortunately, because of the level of experience and other positions that they're looking at here. But if you go to payscale.com and you type in PV pharmacist, it'll say 126, which is just the average pharmacist pay that people are reporting across the board it's just a sign that it's not being very specific. We looked at a few jobs and we found one in California that paid 128 to 185. If you're going into higher management, you should be expecting a much higher range. One job here we found was starting at 239 to 305. Very nice. That's not even including bonuses, which is quite common in this sector. Getting into this field, you should expect a little bit higher salary. If you're starting out, you may not expect something as high as, let's say, a very busy retail setting, you know, 140, 150, it cost, possibly could be lower than that. And so for the score, I'm going to give the salary a 8 out of 10 because it's a pretty healthy salary. You're very likely to be offered bonuses based upon performance, thus increasing your salary even more. And sadly, in most healthcare settings, we're seeing bonuses like that go away more and more. 
By the way, if you want to stay up to date on all things pharmacy careers, we would love it if you would subscribe and let us know what topics you would want to cover next in this field of pharmacy. Now let's talk about job satisfaction. Now, we didn't find any specific information about pharmacovigilance and pharmacists that are working in those fields. However, we do know from the Wellbeing Index that they report a high level of thriving within pharmaceutical companies. This includes, unfortunately, pharmacists across all different departments from medical affairs, regulatory affairs, and yes, probably pharmacovigilance. Pharma pharmacists have the highest level of thriving and satisfaction and the, one of the lowest levels of dissatisfaction across all pharmacy sectors. We did find one published interview of a pharmacovigilance pharmacist, and one of the things they said they enjoyed the most was just learning more about people. This pharmacist mentioned that they were able to talk with people with different backgrounds, which they found very rewarding, learning about cultures and traditions, which I imagine is how it's influencing their traditions with their medication use. You know, it's an interesting challenge to say. We didn't find a whole lot of people talking about it on forums, but on Reddit, we found one pharmacist saying that the compensation was strongly tied to experience, which they liked, and there was up to a 20% target bonus based upon that. In terms of challenges, they said the hard thing is, is not knowing what's going to happen next. It's very common for pharmacists to thrive on certainty, knowing what's going to be happening in that day. And so I can see how that could be a little bit upsetting. When we looked on Glassdoor, we wanted to find some pharmaceutical companies and ideally some companies that focus on pharmacovigilance. And I was happy to see what I found because at Icon, it was a global CRO that provides pharmacovigilance services. They reported a healthy 3.7. Anytime a company is getting above a 3.5 or like a 70%, that's really good in my book. It means the vast majority of people are happy there. They're reporting good things. And to no surprise, senior management continues to be the lowest level score at these places. Another company called PPD had a high score of 3.9 with diversity and inclusion being the highest score there. And another company we found had a 3.9, very healthy indeed. I think pharmacovigilance pharmacists or drug safety professionals love the behind the scenes. They like operations, processes, systems, thinking about the bigger picture, about getting into, you know, critical thinking skills, problem solving. And so I think that's what satisfies them more. They're probably not people that so enjoy like multiple patient interactions or relationship building. They're more probably introverted people. And so in these settings, I think they can thrive very well because there's a lot of problems to solve. Based on the limited knowledge we know about the pharma industry for pharmacists and what these pharmacists are doing in these sectors, I'm going to give the satisfaction score a very healthy seven out of 10. And if you're struggling to get a PV job, you're not alone. Lots of pharmacists struggle in the job market jungle, but this is something that we do here at the Happy PharmD with our career coaching and education services. Ready for a change? Well, book a time with our team to learn more about how our coaching program can help you make some actual progress into a career that you would love. Now let's explore the demand for this job sector. Well, if you typed in on Indeed pharmacovigilance pharmacist, you'd find four jobs and all of them required experience. That's not the greatest search terms. In the pharma field, it's very common to look at people with different backgrounds. Sometimes they're super specific, like they do want a pharmacist or a doctor or a nurse, but often they're willing to look at many different types of people. And so my strong recommendation is that when you're looking for these jobs, that you use keywords and not titles. To show you an example of this, we typed in pharmacovigilance and we found over 300 jobs available. And yes, not all of them were looking for pharmacists, but unfortunately, one thing to note is that the level of jobs looking for people entry level is extremely low. We found 25 jobs on Indeed when just using the word pharmacovigilance. That is an 8% rate. Other industries in pharmacy have rates as high as, you know, 80, 90% are entry level. In pharma, it's typically a little bit lower, but not this low. So if you don't have experience in pharma, this is an extremely challenging uphill battle to fight. Not impossible, but it's certainly not the easiest thing that you could be targeting. We looked at one entry level position in pharmacovigilance and they were demanding at least three years experience. 
We also looked on ZipRecruiter and we found over 200 jobs there, but the same problem happen where most of the jobs are associate director or senior manager level positions, meaning you need experience to even be considered for an interview. On the flip side, if you use a term like drug safety on ZipRecruiter, we found more jobs, over 700 listed there. The pharmacovigilance industry is growing year over year. There are more stringent rules and regulations, just not just in the United States, but worldwide. While it is growing, the demand is not just for pharmacists, it's for people across the board. We say this just because of what the job openings are asking for in terms of level of experience. We like to look at sign-on bonuses as kind of like a measurement as uh, how hard is it for companies to find people. And right now we couldn't see a single sign-on bonus for these positions. We like to look on LinkedIn and we found over 100 jobs in the field of pharmacovigilance. But interestingly, many of these positions didn't report any applicants to them. You know, there's not a whole lot of jobs in this industry. Many of the openings are looking for people with a lot of experience, so it's not easy to get into. And potentially these roles could be expanding, but not at an exponential rate. So I'm gonna give the demand score a four out of 10. And now the final factor, flexibility. How easy is it to get into this and get out of it? How supportive is the work-life balance and our remote or being on call? Is that a problem in this industry? Let's get into it. The typical schedule for these pharmacists is Monday through Friday, holidays off, nine to five. There's certainly times when there's heavy projects that you may be required to work late and that could be an expectation. So be clear that when you're applying to it, knowing what your schedule could be. It's highly unlikely that you would be on call, but Pharmacists within the industry have told me before that they're expected to be on Microsoft Teams at all times to respond to questions or queries from managers. That's not healthy. And again, that's anecdotal evidence. It's highly likely that you can go remote. Many of the jobs that we found when looking on job boards reported hybrid and remote possibilities. How easy is it to get into it? Well, we've kind of touched on that, but we did a deep dive into 10 jobs on LinkedIn and every single one of them wanted a minimum of five years experience within the pharmaceutical industry. And so what I like to tell people when they come into our coach program and they're considering this as an option, you know, I say it is possible. We have seen pharmacists go from clinical backgrounds mainly into this setting. Usually they have experience in P&T committees or quality control meetings, but it's not impossible. It's just, it's a huge uphill battle. It is far easier to transition into different fields like medical affairs, regulatory affairs, or even medical information than to go straight to something like PV. If you're interested in those career paths, uh, check it out. We'll put links in the description for you to see those as well. Some of the perks of this field, I think, are like a huge impact on public health. Your work in this field is instrumental at protecting people and raising the flag when things must be addressed. You get global impact potentially with your work. You get to work on systems and processes, policies, procedures, and for the right person in pharmacy, that can be great, it can be a lot of fun. On the flip side, if patient care is actually something that you enjoy if you have the right environment, this probably isn't the sector for you because you're not gonna get that at all. And some of you may be saying like, oh, please, I don't want to deal with the public anymore. We do believe that this has a fair amount of job security, but understand too that no company is, you know, 100% foolproof against recessions. I think that PV roles, drug safety roles are very, very flexible. They often can be remote or hybrid. They have great schedules. It is very challenging to get into, but once you're in, you're in. And so I'm going to give the flexibility score here a seven out of 10. And now it's time for the final rating. All right, we've explored this career path. If you're in PV or drug safety, I'd love to hear your comments and you know, give your two cents it is super helpful for others exploring this path. But let's break down my final score and how we said things are. So for salary, I said it's super competitive. It's very nice. You're gonna get bonuses probably. And I rated it an eight out of 10. For job satisfaction, we gave it a seven out of 10 because there's usually a high work-life balance that's very nice, 
Not always, but it's usually possible. Flexible schedule, Monday through Friday, very nice. Plus, the work you do has impact on a global scale. For the job demand, we gave it a four out of 10 because not a lot of jobs and it's, it's growing, but not at a huge rate. And for flexibility, we gave it a seven out of 10 because of that great schedule, great work-life balance, big impact, nice schedules. I mean, who doesn't want Monday through Friday? Overall, given these perks, given this really interesting field and its growth, I would give it a healthy 6.5, if not 7 out of 10. How about you? How do you agree with my rating? If you are curious about it, what questions do you have? I'd love to hear it in the comments below. And if you're ready to take that next step in your career, remember to book a time with our team to learn more about how coaching and our education can help you get into a field that you would actually love and enjoy, ideally in less than six months from now. We would love to help you one on one and get started towards a career you could enjoy. Thanks for watching this video. Let me know if you like this video by hitting that like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike and let us know what we can do better in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. And until I see you in the next one, stay curious and take care.